Good morning. Welcome to May 2022 App Training. Some know me as a mobile app ninja. Uh, I am Jeremy Glasgow, but please don't let that title fool you. Um, I'm first of all, uh, in all honest confession, I'm not a ninja, and also we're not all about apps. Um, yes, we 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 like apps. We use them. Uh, we know that our clients, um, you guys, love to get them in front of your customers and, and hope that they download them. But but really what we cover is a really a host of things that involve the ecosystem of today's smartphone addicted consumer and how they interact with local businesses like yours. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. One of those areas is that we all want to drive more car count. That's really at the drive of most marketing is to get more cars in. And of course, there's a lot of avenues to go, how to get the, the ARO higher, how to get them to come back more. But we're, today we're gonna, just gonna kind of take off a bite-sized task of if we were to drive car count with a method of sending a message blast, how can we do that well? So the topic today uh, will be taking about 10 to 12 minutes to cover this. I do have this recorded, so if you're not able to stay for the duration, no problems at all. I'll be posting that on our uh, various channels. Here it is, three tips on how to send a message blast that successfully drives in car count. And of course, like, like most things we do, we'd love to throw in some bonuses. So hang around to the end, I will be covering that. Let's jump right in, here we go. Tip number one. Now, for those of you that know anything about App Fueled and what we stand for, yeah, we are the number one app builder platform, but that is at the core behind really an omni-channel or others might call it a cross-channel environment where your customer and yourself have preferences. Most of the time in our industry, we've, we've, I feel we've probably not tackled that well, at least the preferences from our, from our customer, you know, from the vehicle owner's perspective. So our tip on this is if you're going to send a message blast and you want to do it well, it's got to be tackling that question. Is it in alignment with the preferences of your customer and how they wanted to receive communication from you. Now, if you went back to our training webinar last month, this is a really kind of the touch point in why we went here. Last month, it was how to not annoy your customers with automation. So this is this continues to be always will be, at least in, in from our framework, framework and how our platform and CRM works, that has to be touched on. And also not just the preferences, but what mediums. So, you know, often we think of, you know, of course it was always traditionally a, a postcard, which is valid, right? You've got an email, which is kind of a given. We've moved into the texting course. Now we're talking about social posting, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you're sending your messages out. But we, we also believe, kind of think if you purchased anything on Amazon, there's gonna be push notifications involved. If they've got your brand on their phone, that will most likely, according to their preferences, be something that they want. So, so tip number one, use a cross channel that aligns with these bullet points here. And I'm gonna show you as a, from a practical perspective what this could look like for your customer if, they're, if they, you have gotten them to kind of go past just that traditional CRM thought process, you know, where you're putting in a service ticket, we start emailing them, kind of that traditional style CRM. What if you got them to enroll in your rebate program, reward or member program, and to take some of those steps to, to climb your loyalty ladder, as I like to call it? Well, that's where in practical terms, you don't really have to do much from our platform. This is the customer managing their own, right? So they're, they're gonna be in those traditional realms, email, check, yes, opt-in on text, yes. But then they can go kind of that extra mile if, if they prefer. So it's never just a simple stop, I don't want any text from you, or unsubscribe, I don't want any emails. Put that into the power of your customer. Let them make those choices. And so make sure when you're sending a message in a cross-channel environment, you're, you're choosing one of these categories. Our platform will kind of walk you through that. Don't leave you empty-handed. That, that would be key. And if we kind of go through that, then this will make a little more sense, right? You could have the same message. So I'm just going to highlight four of the channels that our platform could pull off. Basically, you could create one message and have it go out on four channels meeting those requirements. So kind of sneak back here, meeting the preferences and the mediums they prefer. So here you have a, an example of a, a, like a Labor Day special set out right, Elk River Tired Auto. It went out by email, it went out text. Now, did everybody get both of those? Not necessarily, right? 
did everyone um, have a direct mention or a message or a post? If they, well, only, of course, if they followed you in those environments. And same thing with did they get a push alert through your app? Not necessarily, right? Did they download that? Did they sign up? Did you prompt them to decline your loyalty ladder? But what we're trying to do is, is do what the big brands do, right? If you get a message from Starbucks or Chick-fil-A or, you know, just take your brand, it's going to reach you in the channels that you have interacted with that brand. It's not just going to pick one. And sometimes you do, right? You maybe intentionally just want to do an Instagram post. Fine. But most of the time, if you have a message and you're leaving it up to your customer to choose the preferences, you can create that one message and push it out in a cross-channel environment. So that would be uh, help save you time. You don't have to create this message in multiple places and multiple platforms, but it also helps your customer because you're reaching them where they prefer. So let's hop over to step number two. Now, making it timely. This this could have a lot of ways we could go with that. I, I'm going to bring up three points that, that what we would mean by make it timely. So your message for you, right, if you want to send it out, is always timely. But is it always timely for the recipient? And there's ways using automation you can get that done. You can have filters that would be things, and I'll, I'll be showing you that in just a second on the screen, where you can filter out the customer basis to who gets what. You can use some exclusions, so maybe your customer has done certain things and therefore they, they don't need the message. Or maybe even more relevant, uh, it could be something to do with their actual customer history. How have they done business with you in the past? When was their vehicle in there last time? So those three things, if you took them in concert, work out to be a way where you could say, it's going to be a timely message, not just that it's on multiple mediums. Because the stressing point here is automation can be annoying. We all know that. We've been annoyed by communication from, from, from companies. We don't want to be like that. Don't annoy our customers. How do we do that? You have to make it timely. And if I were to kind of give you an example here, so if you guys, we, we encourage you to do this. We've got tools that if you want to ask our team to do it, just simply submit a support ticket. We actually would set all this up for you. We, we love to help our our clients use our custom message tool. But let's just say with Memorial Day coming up, now we, we actually have pre-built messages too. You don't have to create everything from scratch. You could just come into Memorial Day, flip it on, choose an image, you know, choose a special, done, fire, maybe you know, update a little text. But in, in this case, let's say this is going to be our Memorial Day. Our Memorial Day, uh, let's say uh, recognition. You're testing my spelling, right, guys? So Memorial Day Recognition Day, um, you know, honor. That's just the internal description. And we just choose one of those categories we we're talking about. This would go to who selected what. We're going to say it's a special. Maybe we have a special included this. And we want this to go out on the 26th at 10 a.m. And here's where you get that these four methods. So email and push go together. As in most great apps, you don't leave the push alone. So many people don't know how to adjust their devices, uh, allow notifications. So those can actually go hand in hand. We've got some ways to, especially with iOS and you've got uh, timely notifications, you have a way to filter out, is it, should it be time sensitive? So when you have those working in concert, they work better. So our platform makes sure that that's the case. Also, you could enable it to go to Twitter or Facebook automatically, and you can also have it be a text message as well. So when I click update on this, what it's, what it's going to show you is just a couple examples of what we mean by filters and exclusions. So the type of customer you can choose here, you know, often you're just going to choose all, right, recipient types, like how you define a customer. You can then get into a little bit more, let's say you're trying to drive, right, wasn't the point of this, right, we wanted more car count. So did we really want to get the guy who was just here within the last two months? Maybe not. So, you know, maybe you're going to say last visit more than, and put in something like three months. So that's just a quick place. Or maybe it's a customer who spent less than. Maybe we're okay with that, but we want, or, or more than, you know, let's put in $500. So anyone that's over that, we're not going to bother them with this message. They've already given us 500 or more of their dollars. So you can kind of see how quickly we're doing that. Now, again, exclusions. Often our customers are doing things we know represents loyalty we know they're more likely to come back. So do we really have to have every enticing call to action message go to them? We think not. So exclude them, right? Exclude them from the message because they're already showing you signs. And we have a scorecard for this. I'll show you an example of this. 
right? If if we've got your little club skills, little guys that have ninja skills over here, um, and, and in this case, right, we we have a running scorecard that you can see at any time in our CRM. So you can, you don't again, you don't have to know this as you create a message, but just for context, right? If we're clicking on this, and let's see the details. We allow you to create all these different items that add up to, well, what has this customer done? And that's what we mean by exclusions. And they're kind of marking themselves off. This customer's earned their way to a B score at your, at your store. So doing those types of actions, we've got some case studies where as they climb your loyalty ladder, they're more likely to come back. They'll spend more when they do. So using messages when using that in context this is a great place to say hey we know that if they're already part of your rewards program you can exclude those people maybe this is going to be a rewards hey join our rewards program well why would you send that to people that already have so you can use this in, in flexible ways to make sure they don't get your message and you can also override don't recommend that if you don't want to get busted by some of your customers but there's ways you can do that maybe Maybe you have some customers that were in a moved status or lost and you specifically wanted to reach them. Or again, if you're having customers tell you do not market to us and you have it in an off, we don't recommend it, although you have the option. So why do we give that? It's a debatable question around here, but you, you have the tools and the power within your grasp to make this message be timely and cross channel. So that's the, the first two tips. I'm gonna hop into the third one. This is actually, in, in my opinion, marketing is hard. Getting a message that uh, resonates with your customers is, is hard. And I, I could have titled this a lot of things. I chose to say the third tip is make sure your message uses an enticing call to action. This can mean a broad range of things. Often the coaches in our industry will pick on that and say, hey, don't be a discount shop. And I get that. That's the, the first objection that you'll hear about well enticing enticing i don't i don't want to give away my profits absolutely having said that how do you figure out how to answer the what's in it for me question right you, your customer might drive by 15 auto repair shops between now and their next visit they might get 10 to 15 ads they might have countless competitor opportunities let's call it to leave you that doesn't mean they were stolen or that you didn't earn their business. It's just life comes up. Customers respond to timely messages. That's what we do. That's what good marketers do. They have timely messages with enticing calls to action, and that's a big part, not all. Uh, most would say it's really down to customer service and support. We, did, we didn't wow them with the experience, so they didn't come back. But there's other things too, right? There really is great marketing, or lucky marketing, or just timing that happened by chance that was better from your competitor than yours. So this idea of having a clear call to action at the right time that is enticing, it gets them to do something, that's why I, I put here in kind of all caps, we have to put on our vehicle owner hat. We can't think like us and how are we going to protect our profits? What kind of car do we want in? You know, get picky. And maybe you can. Maybe you're in a situation where your bays are relatively full. You really can be picky. There's a particular type and exact style of customer that you have to, and the message may only need to pull in one response, and it will pay for itself. Uh, so there's so many if then buts in this particular tip, but it starts with understanding our customer, putting their hat on, feeling what they feel, think how they think, maybe walk in their shoes and put together a message that's relevant to them. And that would be something that would answer that question. They are all asking, right? If they're going to pay any attention at all to your message, was it what's in it for me? And did you answer that? So that has got us covered what we're going to cover today. I, I Like I said, I wasn't going to leave you hanging here in the last minute. I'd like to give out this bonus tip. This is becoming more and more probably could have started here with the number one tip. This might be the most, if you take any one thing today, this might be it. It's that not only are customers wanting texting from you, it's they're now frustrated if it, if it doesn't appear to be available. So I give you a, like just an example of this. If, if I was to pull up, let's say, one of our demo websites here, we have a big actions button with a live chat with a call or text, text me back, right? So it's making it known 
it's making it known all throughout your site that there are actions that can be taken, right, for, for whatever that is that will prompt the conversation to continue. And that goes the same for our messaging too. So w w the way I was attempted to phrase this was, you know, really try to make your messages conversational in style. So your recipients feel they can simply reply and get a real life response from you. See, that's the thing, right? We love automation, but we also want our customers to think it's personal. There is that gray area, and, and I think it can be done. I've, I've seen it done. We've got great examples of it being done, but it starts with the idea that the customer feels like they're not part of this random message, and somehow they have to go through hoops just to get in touch with you from the call to action. So that call to action has to be clear, and the more it is these days, at least half the people want it to be, maybe just a simple text back. So even if it was just ending your, your text message with or your email, you can text this here, simply reply here, something like that. They feel like they can just instantly hop into a conversation with your staff and somebody, somebody on your end who's going to take care of their needs, let's say pronto, right? They, they really want it to be not just real life, but an immediate response from you. So I do hope this helps. Uh, I won't leave you hanging on additional support. We have our support training page. You also can create tickets. Let's say you want to create one of these, support these custom message blasts. You can just click on appfuel.com support. And in this environment right here, there is a ticket. This in about, I've been told it's three minutes or less, create a ticket. This will walk you through just giving us some basic info, and we'll set the whole message up for you. Our team loves to do that. We'll get all the channels set up. We'll get the exclusions, the filters, even some of the messaging help. We'll get it done, and you'll have a timely message going out. Of course, you can you can use our our pre-existing ones, right? The ones where you've got we've got something like 25 pre-built messages, whether it's special, a discount, a holiday, some crafted message you can just run with. They're already pre-built, so please please use those. Uh, staying in touch with your customers is vital, but again, don't don't annoy them. Keep it keep it relevant. Use cross channels. Keep it timely. All right. Um, thanks thanks for listening. I hope we get connected next month. If you missed this one, and if you didn't hear this or somehow the connection was bad, we will be posting the report uh, the recording. So stay tuned. And if you're on with this now, I'm just going to go ahead and stop the recording, and we'll be doing a question and answer sessions with those here.